someone hopefully will light our chalice. With these words by the Reverend Andre Mole, thank you. As we gather together, may we remember when you share with me what is most important to you, that is where listening begins. When I show you that I hear you, when I say your life matters, that is where compassion begins. When I open the door to greet you, that is where hospitality begins. When I venture out to bring you to shelter, that is where love begins. When I risk my comfort to ease your suffering, when I act against hatred, violence, and injustice, that is where courage begins. When we experience the full presence of each other because of our shared humanity, because of our differences, that is where holy gratitude begins. May this space be a table that is not complete until all are welcome. May this table be a space of beauty where together <laughs> we create a series of miracles and where all that we share is sacred. May it be so. Thank you. This first song that we'll sing together is in your teal hymnal. It's number 1015. I know I can. And we'll sing all five verses. Once you get to the end, you'll see that there's three more verses on the bottom of that second page. Please stand if you feel comfortable. start over. Maybe if you play it through once, okay. and then everybody will start together.
that we don't do nearly enough. So I'm trying a new thing. I'm trying, um, I'm trying a teleprompter that lets me have the words advance without me using my hands. So we'll see if we have the timing right. Our first message this morning is about a carrot, an egg, and a coffee bean. So a carrot, an egg, and a coffee bean walk into a bar. That's not it. Carrots and eggs and coffee beans don't walk. But it is about a young woman struggling with life, went to her mother and told her how her life was miserable and difficult. She was tired of fighting and struggling with her problems, and she wanted to give up. Her mother, without saying much, took the young lady to the kitchen. She filled three pots with water. In the first pot, she placed carrots. In the second one, she placed eggs. And in the last one, she placed some ground coffee beans. She let them sit and boil without saying much to her daughter. The daughter wondered what her mother was about. What is she trying to make experiments when she's explaining her heartfelt troubles? After some time, the mother turned down the burner, fished out the carrots and the eggs, and placed them in a bowl. Then she ladled out some coffee and put it in a cup. Turning to her daughter, she asked, now tell me, dear, what do you see? A carrot, an egg, and coffee, she replied. Look closer and feel the carrots, said the mother. The daughter noted that they were soft. The mother then asked her to take out the egg and to break it. The interior of the egg was hard boiled. Finally, she asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich taste and smell brought a smile to her face. The daughter then asked, what does this mean, mother? All three items, the carrot, the egg, and the coffee, went into the same situation, the boiling water. But each reacted differently. The carrot, when it went in, was strong and hard and unrelenting. But after being subjected to the boiling water, it softened and became weak. The egg was fragile with a thin outer shell and a liquid interior. After being subjected to the boiling water, that became hard on the outside and the inside. The ground coffee beans were unique. As they came out of the water, they changed the water itself. What are you, she asked her daughter. How do you respond in difficult situations? Are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean? A carrot that seems strong at first, but becomes soft and loses its strength in adversity. An egg that starts out fragile with a malleable heart, but hardens in the heat. Or do you have a fluid spirit that as you struggle with adversity, transforms the adversity itself? May your roots grow deep. May your branches spread far. May you find the world to be a wonderful place with adversity and resilience and leave it better for those who follow. So you might note that the order of our service is slightly changed. Sometimes we send our children off to religious exploration directly after the first message. But we're trying something new, which is including all of our community in our offering. 
though there are no children, to sing off to religious exploration. Because it's important that everybody of all ages recognize that our offering is an expression of our faith and our commitment to this congregation. We support the work of this congregation through our gift of the gifts of our time, our talent, and our treasure. Your financial contributions help to support the work that happens inside of these walls, worship and pastoral care and community care. And it also helps support the ways that we are able to show up in our community in service and for justice. What you put into the Helping Hand Fund supports organizations that are doing good work in our community. A portion of that supports the Minister's Discretionary Fund, which helps individuals in immediate need. However you give, using the QR code in your order of service, the baskets that will pass in a moment, or the link in your chat, your gifts are gratefully gratefully received. Thank you for your generosity. As we enter into this more prayerful moment, we set aside the mundane concerns of our lives as we share our deep joy, sorrow, and concern for the world. If you're joining us in the meeting house, uh, please come to the microphone so that everyone can hear you. And if you're joining us online, you should be able to unmute yourself. You may have to request that you be unmuted, and if you're joining us on the phone online, you can unmute yourself by pressing star six. Ways that we are able to support those in need, even as we mourn that that help is needed in the first place. We pray for a world that is transformed by our care. Grateful to Luca for demonstrating for us ways that we live into community. Ways that we sometimes make a mistake, sometimes scrape against each other, but always, always return back to each other in love for all that we do and share in community. May the warmth here follow you into your week and may you help it to spread. As we deepen into this time of 
meditation and reflection, I invite you to take a deep breath. Or three or four. Let go of tension that may be hiding in your body. Let your nervous system relax. Let us teach it that this is a place where it is safe, where your body is safe and you are safe. This reflection on resilience comes from the Reverend Victoria Safford. Here is where I found my voice and chose to be brave. Here's a place where I forgave someone against my better judgment, and I survived that, and unexpectedly, amazingly, I became wiser. Here's where I was once forgiven, was ready for once in my life to receive forgiveness and to be transformed. And I survived that also. I lived to tell the tale. This is the place where I said no, more loudly than I thought I ever could. And everybody stared, but I said no, loudly anyway because I knew it must be said. And those staring settled down into harmless, ineffective grumbling. And over me, they had no power anymore. Here is a time, and here's another. When I laid down my fear and walked right on into it, right up to the neck into that roiling water. Here's where cruelty taught me something. And here's where I was first astonished by gratuitous compassion and knew it for the miracle it was, the requirement it is. It was a trembling time. And here, much later, is where I returned the blessing clumsily. It wasn't hard, but I was unaccustomed it cycled around, and as best I could, I sent it back out, passed the gift along. This circular motion around and around had no apparent end. And here's a place, a murky puddle, where I have stumbled more than once and fallen. I don't know yet what to learn there. And this sight, I was outraged, and the rage sustains me still. It clarifies my seeing. And there's where something amazing caught me, a warm breeze in late summer, bird song in late winter. Here's what I was told. Here's where I was told that something was wrong with my eyes, that I see the world strangely. And here's where I said, yes, I know. I walk in beauty. Here's where I began to look with my own eyes and listen with my own ears and sing my own song, shaky as it is. Here is where, as if by a surgeon's knife, my heart was opened up. And here, and here, and here, and here, these are the landmarks of my conversion. That was supposed to be a graceful tinkle. Here is where I am sometimes clumsy. This next song for us to sing together is also in your teal hymnal. It's number 1020. Wo ya ya. 
I invite you to rise as you feel willing or comfortable or sit and let the song wash through you. Oh, it's four pages if you're following. are going heaven knows where we are going but we know within and we will get there heaven knows how we will get there but we know we will it will be hard we know and the road will be muddy I should have done this before the song will be muddy and rough but we'll get there heaven knows how we will get there but we know we will So courage and resilience, a whole month on resilience. It's a pretty basic thing. Resilience is the ability to recover from setbacks, from adversity or conflict or failure or mistakes. People often talk about it as the ability to bounce back. They'll use an elastic band and show you, I should have had an elastic band, but I do not. How if you stretch it, it will come back and return to its original shape. Resilience, we say, is a kind of elasticity. Mental, emotional, physical, sometimes spiritual, elasticity. Flexibility, like a willow tree the willow of the title of this service. I think the quote in your order of service is cut off, but it should read that the oak fought the wind and was broken. The willow bent when it must and survived. Willows are known for resilience. They are strong and they are light. They bend under the weight of storms and the elements. And it's even said that when part of a willow is disconnected, cut off from the rest, replanted in the right circumstances, it will grow into an entirely new tree. Light and flexible 
with the capacity to grow anew when disconnected. We should be like a willow, less like oaks, strong and mighty. Willows, strong and mighty and light and flexible. How about you? Are you an oak? Are you a willow? Are you a carrot or an egg? A coffee bean, sometimes I hear that described as a tea bag. Sometimes a tea bag also goes in, transforms the water that it is seeping in. When you face adversity, when you lose a job or don't get the job that you wanted, have a major health concern, a falling out with a friend or family, death of a loved one, heartbreak, or the end of a relationship that maybe isn't heartbreak and it is still an ending. When your car breaks down, or you miss a train, or the bus, or the jitney is late, or there's traffic, and you miss the play that you were looking forward to. When you embarrass yourself, when you are misunderstood or hurt by others, all of these are things that have happened to me. When you think about the adversity and setbacks in your life, a carrot or an egg or a coffee bean, what I like about the coffee bean is this idea of transformation that resilience may not be just bouncing back into the shape that you held before, but it could be transforming into something entirely different and transforming the world, the adversity around you into something entirely different. And the cool thing is, resilience isn't something that we're just born with. You're just resilient or not. You're just strong or not. You're just flexible or not. Resilience is something that we can cultivate. There are a few things that are involved. Awareness, optimism, problem solving, courage. So the awareness part is when bad things happen, it seems easy and it's not to actually acknowledge that the thing has happened and to grieve it. We rush to move on, to let go, to get on with it. But a first step is actually sitting in the thing that has happened and the thing we hardly ever talk about with adversity is the grieving the letting go of our idea our dream our thought about what was going to be what should have been what could have been even that relationship that wasn't heartbreak you were in it and had some expectation of what could be. And now it won't. Acknowledging and grieving the situation. And then optimism. I have been hearing and reading about optimism a lot lately. About six months ago in the summer, a new study was released uh, done by the Harvard School of Public Health. What they found is that optimism actually extends life 
for people. People who are optimistic live longer and have better emotional health. It's not a sense or a feeling, it's an actual longitudinal study. And optimism is not just putting on a happy face, pretending to be good with the situation, smiling through it. The thing that separates optimists from pessimists isn't that optimists always think that things will turn out well. The thing that separates optimists from pessimists is that optimists believe that they have the power to make change in a situation. Optimists believe that when things happen, good or bad or indifferent, that we have the power to actually create change in our lives. So there's acknowledging the awareness part, there's the optimism, the belief that we can actually do something. The world is not just against us. And then there's the problem solving. We can do something. So what do we actually do? It's like looking at a situation clear-eyed, head-on, and developing some steps for how to move forward, long and or short term. And this, again, is not a thing that people are just born with. And it doesn't even expect that you need to have all of the resources necessary to move forward from a situation. Because part of problem solving is to develop the skills that we need to transform our situation. Part of problem solving is to ask for help, to be open to help and sometimes criticism, sometimes someone telling us that we actually need to level up. So there's awareness and optimism, and then the hard work of problem solving. But what pushes us forward, what pulls it all together, is confidence. That's courage. Because we can know all we want what the situation is, and we can believe that something can be done about it. We can even know what we should do about it. But taking that next step, to move out into the unknown. Candace Doby, who is a coach on, uh, she's a career and life coach, talks about courage and risk. And she reminds us that courage does not guarantee success. Just because we are courageous, just because we take a risk, doesn't mean that it will work out. And so part of resilience is recognizing that. Courage, she says, opens the door to possibility. So can we open the door to possibility in the face of an uncertain future? What motivates us to take the risk is sometimes what's on the other side. And sometimes it's what's on our side. It is what happens if we don't act. So it's awareness and optimism and courage and the fourth thing, problem solving. But courage is where I want to land us. Brene Brown talks about courage and notes that the core, the root word for courage, is core, which is Latin for heart. Courage, she says, is a heart word. In its earliest form, the word courage meant to speak one's mind by telling all of one's heart. Over time, this definition has changed, and today, we typically associate courage with heroic and brave deeds. But in my opinion, 
she goes on. In her opinion, this definition fails to recognize the inner strength and the level of commitment required for us to actually speak honestly and openly about who we are, about our experiences, good or bad. Speaking from our hearts, she writes, it's what I think of as ordinary courage. I am reminded when I read that reading from the meditation reading about the path forward, the map of my heart. Um, there's a story from Paolo Coelho about the perfect heart. You may have heard this one. A young man is standing in the middle of town proclaiming that he had the most beautiful heart in the whole valley. A large crowd gathered and all they wanted was to admire his heart because it was perfect. Not a mark, not a flaw on it. But then an old man appeared in front of the crowd and he says to the young man, your heart is not nearly as beautiful as mine. The crowd and the young man look at the old man's heart. It was beating strongly, sure, but full of scars. It had places where pieces had been removed and other pieces had been put in. They didn't fit quite right. There were jagged edges and mushiness. The young man looked at this heart and laughed. You must be joking, he said. Compare this messy heart to mine, smooth and perfect, no scars, no tears. Sure, the old man told him, your heart is perfect looking, but I would never trade with you. Every scar in this heart represents a person to whom I have given my love I tear out a piece of my heart and give it to them, and often they give me a piece of theirs in return. You see these pieces that don't quite fit, that have rough edges. Sometimes I give pieces of my heart and get nothing in return. That's those empty spaces, the holes and gouges. Giving love is taking a chance. The young man stood silently with tears running down his face. He walked up to the old man, reached into his perfect, young and beautiful heart, ripped out a piece and offered it to the old man, who took his offering, placed it into his heart and tore out a piece and returned it. It fit, but not perfectly and there were some jagged edges. The young man looked at his heart, not perfect looking anymore, but more beautiful than ever. Courage and resilience live together. How we engage our heart to face life's challenges and adversities, sometimes to return back to our original shape other times, blessedly, to transform into something entirely different, marked and scarred and stronger and more beautiful. May we together stretch our hearts, bend and mush them Maybe like the willow, parts of it will fall out entirely and be replanted somewhere else and grow into a whole new thing. As we make our community a better place. This last song for us to sing together, also in your teal hymnal, we could have dispensed with the gray ones altogether. This is number 10 to 8, The Fire of Commitment.
If you're joining us on Zoom, uh, this room will remain open for a few minutes after our service concludes for informal conversation. And if you're joining us here in the meeting house, we hope you'll stay for light refreshments and fellowship. Thank you to our hospitality host, definitely Tip Roland. I think there are some others helping along the way. And if you're visiting, please again, sign our guest book either here in the meeting house or, or online so that our care and connection team can be in touch with you. Thank you so much to our greeter this week, Carol Mason. And hey, you can take your turn being either a greeter or a hospitality host. Uh, there's a link in the chat or a sign-up sheet at the fellowship table. If you find yourself in agreement with our values and our mission, we hope that you will find a home here. Next week, our guest speaker will be Tawana, Ford, Tawana Fulford, executive director and founder of the Butterfly Effect Project. We hope you will return. These closing words by Jean Olson, go boldly. May you be brave enough to expose your aching woundedness and reveal your vulnerability. May you speak your deepest truths, knowing that they will change as you do. May you sing the music within you, composing your own melody, playing your song with all your heart. May you draw, paint, sculpt, and sew, showing the world your vision. May you write letters, poetry, biography, slogans, graffiti, a great novel, laying bare your words to love and hate. May you love even though your heart breaks again and again. And until the end of your days, may you be filled with possibilities and courage. Oh, you have words for our closing song as an insert in your order of service.
We extinguish our flame with the words printed in your order of service. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth. And then, yep. It's, it finally, hi. Okay, microphone. Oh. Hi, hi, guys. Hey, patience. Hi. Oh, Hello. Gosh, look at the wrinkles. Stand no, back. Stop that. <laughs> hi, guys. There we are. Where, where, where are the little people? Up there? Yes, up top. Okay. I wish I went. Hi, everybody. 